Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this Mercedes B-Class. This is a 2006 the W245 chassis. Uh, I'm gonna be changing the front brake pads. Um, don't mind my oil can here, it's just I'm doing an oil change as well, uh, which I already have a video on. But I'm gonna be doing the front brake pads in this car. Um, so if you get your bonnet open and you come here you can open your brake fluid reservoir um, to start with. So just take the little cover off. You don't need to remove this really. Um, and also just check the quantities of uh, brake fluid you may have in there. If you shine the light, you can see where the fluid is at. In this case, it's sort of halfway between the mean and the max. You can just see the mean and the max marks there. So I can see it's around there, uh, which is okay. Because uh, when we push the, um, to remove the pads and fit new ones, we need to push the pistons in the calipers back in. So when we push them back in, it pushes the fluid back into this reservoir. If this reservoir was fairly full, um, then what happens is sometimes you push the piston back and the fluid starts coming out of here and it goes everywhere. And uh, that fluid is kind of corrosive, so you want to avoid having fluid spilt. Um, however, sometimes you can't avoid um, that happening. So you could always wash the area afterwards or you could put a lot of rag here paper rag and if any fluid comes out it will get absorbed um, on it and so you save yourself a mess um, so just some little tips there um, whether you do it or not it's up to you um, so now I'm gonna get the car up I already removed the front wheels because I'm just doing a general service to the car anyway um, but we're gonna tackle the the pads so for now, that's all we need to do. Get that cap off, check your fluid quantity, and then get the car uh, up and remove the tires, the wheels. Okay, got the car up, wheels out. And um, I was just cleaning a little bit around here because I noticed um, my CV gator here is become detached from the CV joint there um, so I'm gonna need to put a, a, a tie band or the locking um, clip that goes around it um, so it's, it's come off and obviously the uh, the grease from it is been coming it's going it's gone everywhere <laughs> around there as you can maybe see and that grease is really messy it messes everything up uh, I really dislike that grease, um, but uh, anyway, I know we can't discriminate these days, so I'm not going to uh, say much about that grease, otherwise I might get offended. <laughs> Just joking. Um, anyway, um, now we've got the car up. Uh, we need to remove these 13 mil bolts here. Now, normally, you can remove this one here and flip this up a little bit and change your pads that way. But uh, I'm going to remove both of them in order to check the pins and also just uh, wire brush the area uh, a little bit. It might, it'll be easier to do it without the caliper in place. Uh, but otherwise, it, it can be done really quickly as well if you just uh, open that bolt, swing this and change your pads but I'm gonna do it maybe slightly the longer way. Okay, so this side of the pads um, of the braking system has got the sensor. So I'm gonna remove that too. And I got a new sensor. So I'm going to try and take this one out here. Even though it's not worn out. I was actually worn out a little bit. By the way, the pads I'm using 
that is here blueprint but um let's say this a and b class just make sure you get the correct ones for your car though in case you have a slightly different spec bigger discs or anything like that um now that i got the sensor out i'm going to um, try and push the piston back at this point so if you get your screwdriver on the side of the caliper and a little bit of the the pad in there you can just about start bringing this caliper will move this way your piston will go in um, the other way to do it would be to use some G clamps um, but I find that this way works pretty well and then you're set to and ready to to fit your pads okay so that is going nicely in I must admit, I struggle a little bit with the other side, so um, it can be a little bit hard sometimes to do it, but uh, it's one way of doing it. Right, okay, that's enough, it's all the way back in. Oh, there's the messy grease tried to clean it but didn't notice it was there too so it just kind of goes everywhere because obviously as the uh, dry shaft is turning it's uh, throwing grease everywhere so it's a good time to inspect your CV gators there anyway um, now I'm going to open this 13 mil bolt here and I'm just going to hold the inner nut and we'll apply the same procedure at the top so bolt is just there and I'm gonna hold this bit here because it it turns as you undo the bolt So they have some of that uh, Loctite in there. So in some uh, in some brake pad kits you get new bolts, but um, I didn't get new bolts in this kit. So um, we can reuse these ones. Just need to apply a little bit of uh, Loctite on that. That's why it's a good idea to. If you're gonna do a job like this and you're watching a video better to watch the whole video and then you prepare yourself with all the things that you need uh, before you start otherwise you get caught without having certain things <clears throat> having said that I don't always apply 
I've recently started applying some Loctite on, on these walls, but I don't normally do anyway. So it's not the end of the ace if you didn't, but probably <clears throat> better to do it. Now we can take the caliper out. And, uh, well, look at the mess there. <laughs> and, uh, just hold your caliper and, and be careful not to drop it. You don't really want to put strain on the hose there. The brake hose, that is. Don't really want to be damaging that bending it too much or causing any problems. I'm just gonna try and rinse this grease here. Okay so I just uh, spent a little bit of time cleaning that and grease off of there so just letting it dry a bit now. So you can put your caliper up here on top of the disc area just make sure it doesn't fall out um, otherwise you can um, do some cable ties or something, cable tie from there to the, to the spring, to the coil spring up there, or cable tie it somewhere so it doesn't fall out and you don't damage this hose. Um, now we can remove our pads. They might be a little bit hard or stuck. I know these don't look too bad, but um, the other side, one side of the other side was looking a little bit thinner, and uh, that's why I'm actually changing them. So, so these are the ones that came out of here, but this is the one on the other side. So that's the reason I'm changing them. Now, uh, we're going to remove these little bits here where the pads sit on. We're going to clean them. Sometimes you do get new ones. So you can go just go ahead and fit the new ones. But before you could also uh, wire brush the area a little bit. When you're wire brushing, these wires go out like this. And if you go around here, you can damage these little rubbers here. You can pierce them. So just be aware of that, just be careful when you're wire brushing, so you don't want to cause damage. This liquid is brake cleaner that I'm using to clean the area to rinse it. Now I'm going to wire brush these as well, make sure they look like a little bit like metal again. Now you can wire brush your caliper a little bit as well, but again just make sure you don't brush this area of the piston because you may pierce this rubber here. If you pierce it or damage it, then water will get in there and this will cease in time. So sometimes I clean inside a little bit, some of the corrosion, just being careful not to, as I said, pierce that. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, Wire brush that a little bit, nothing too crazy, and then we'll come back to it. And uh, don't breathe that stuff. Wear a mask or cover your mouth 
in your nose. <laughs> okay, now I have this. I cleaned it as much as I can. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, copper grease in that bit there. Nothing too much, just a little bit like that. That's the area where the pad slides. And then just push that in there. And I already done the same with the top one. You can then get your pads and just put them in there. They should slide fairly easily with no resistance or issues there. Um, and then I will put a little bit of uh, copper grease on this side and a little bit here as well and just a little bit on this one here so just try to put it I try to put it on the on this side as a circle where that touches Uh, actually, one more thing before you fit your uh, calipers, you can check these pins here. Just make sure they are moving freely. If they are not moving, then they could be seized in there, and that would be due to damage on this rubber. And if that happens, you may need to change the actual carrier here, the caliper carrier. But otherwise, if they are freely moving, then that should be okay. You can also take this out like this. Just inspect them. There's no signs of water in there. This has uh, some uh, grease on it, molly grease. You could clean them and put grease on them if you wanted to, but you need to have the molly grease with you. So those are okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, go ahead and fit that back. Here's my bolt, here's my Loctite liquid. Let's put a little bit on that. And uh, I don't remember the torque settings. For well, these bolts, I think it's 30 newton meters, something like that. I'll try to uh, search it and put it in the video. Okay, so I'm not using a torque wrench here, but uh, um, I'm always doing this, so I pretty much know, have an idea of how much to tighten it to. But if you don't do this often, you might get the wrong idea and you over tighten that because I can, I can carry on tightening this and then either it gets too tight or it snaps or damages this. And then you're stuck you have to order a pin and whatnot okay there's the sensor there's a little hole um, on the pad and we just push it in there and push the sensor in and that's it so we're pretty much done here Uh, the next thing to do would be to actually um, just check the fluid reservoir and uh, see if we need to top up any any fluid or or leave it as is. Okay, got my wheels on, got the car down. Um, before we check the brake fluid, what I want to do is just uh, press the brake. So 
that's just something to remember as well don't just go driving off um, make sure you press the brake just pump it a few times until it gets hard because then the paper there there we are now it's nice and hard because now we we just push the pistons out so they can be at a level of the new the new parts right struggling to get in there i think i'm getting fatter i need to lose a bit of weight right now um, well i need to lose a lot of weight anyway now you can see we pump the the pa the, the brakes and after changing the pads and pushing the pistons back the fluid is now at the max you can see that clearly so that's how much is gone up so you see what i mean that if your fluid was at that level to start with right now it would be all the way up here and imagine if you were changing the rear pads as well and your fluid was that high then it will definitely start coming out the top so anyway um i'm happy with that level there so now i can put the cap back on there and uh we're pretty much done so we pumped the the brakes already and just make sure you drive slowly for the first few uh, miles um, so the pads can start wearing in a little bit and that's it you should be done so the next video on this car is i'm going to be changing the spark plugs in this model um, so look out for that video and uh, don't forget to give me a like if you like if the video helps you and uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on the next video thank you for watching hope the video helps